Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. I hope that you are all doing well. This is where I talk about the books that I'm reading. I like to read diverse books and I highlight Canadian literature. If you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I am going to be um, looking back at the books that I read in May. Um, I know it's a while ago, but I had some interesting reads in May. Nothing that blew me away, um, but just there's a few books that had me thinking about them like long after I had finished them, and I do like that. So first, um, let's look at some stats. Um, from my May books, the top moods were reflective and emotional, followed by hopeful, lighthearted, funny, challenging and adventurous. And that sounds about right to me. Um, I read a total of 1,662 pages, according to Storygraph. 29% uh, of my reading was nonfiction and 71% was fiction. And my top genres were contemporary, LGBTQIA2S+, literary, nature, children's, which is surprising, uh, romance, politics, memoir, history, and historical. My average rating was 4.07, which is much higher than I expected it to be. So that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, my TBR stack is currently way higher than I would like it to be. It is sitting at 1518. So let's get through these books and see how low we can get the TBR stack before I net then share my June and July's book haul in my next videos. Um, the first book that I read was for the Tuesdays with Tony reading project that I am still doing. <laughs> AJ from AJ Dunn Reads and Writes has been done for, I don't know, forever now. And I still have a couple more books to go. And in May, I read A Mercy, whoops, A Mercy by Toni Morrison. And I do hope to film my video for this and get it up soon. Um, this leaves me with two more books to read for the project. I think, I think what's happening is that Toni Morrison's first few books were amazing. They were incredible. Um, and I looked forward to reading the next books because of how incredible they were. And then the last few books have just been okay for me. So the excitement has dwindled. Um, but I will be talking more about A Mercy um, in my Tuesdays with Tony video coming soon. And that brings the TBR to 1517. The next book was the Reading Across Canada book club pick for me. And if you are interested in being part of that book club, we read a book a month. Um, there is information below in the description box, so please go check that out. Um, we read French Exit by Patrick DeWitt. This was shortlisted for the Giller Prize in 2018, and it was not what I thought it was going to be. It took me a little while to realize that this was actually a funny and tragic story. Um, this is about Frances Price and her son Malcolm. They are among New York's well-to-do families um, until Francis's husband dies. And due to a number of factors, mostly that Francis doesn't know how to handle money or live below her means, um, the money is dwindling quickly. And Francis believes that her husband's soul lives in their cat, who um, they call Small Frank. Um, her and her son, they end up moving to Paris until the money runs out. That's the plan. So here's the thing about this book. It's, it's actually funny and sad all at once. Um, I didn't really like any of the characters. They are often frustrating, but I think that's part of the point. Um, I then watched the movie after reading the book, and the movie stars Michelle Pfeiffer, who I love. And what I thought it did better than the book was how it created the community of these quirky characters um, that exist in this story. Um, it was more clear in the movie how these characters, you know, become in some ways a, a found family. So the endings are very different. 
And I think the book ending makes more sense and it's more in line with or more true to um, Francis's character especially and also the title of the book. So this is one of those books that I thought about and appreciated more about it after reading it and I kept thinking about the choices that the author made um, about certain things and found that there was you know a lot to unpack. So I do hope to read more from Patrick DeWitt. I haven't read anything else by him, um, but he did recently win. Um, he just won the Stephen Leacock Award for humor um, with his book, The Librarianist. So this puts the TBR at 1516. The next book was one of my most anticipated books of 2024, and that is The Peace by Romeo Dallaire. Um, originally, I was supposed to go to a book event with Romeo Dallaire, but unfortunately that was cancelled due to some health concerns that he had. So that was very disappointing. I obviously hope that he's okay. Um, and as some of you know, I have a special place in my heart for Rwanda. And usually I read books during the anniversary of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsis um, in Rwanda. Um, during this 100 the 100 days um, so this year was the 30th anniversary so it seemed appropriate to read something by Romeo Dallaire who I, I really admire um, so as someone who has an interest in Rwanda um, not only the genocide um, but I would say more importantly like where the country is now and how they have gotten to where they are and and where they're going um, and also as someone who teaches peace building I found this book to be very interesting. There's a lot in it, you know, that I already knew. Um, I know Romeo Dallaire's story, but it was refreshing, I would say, to read about the ways that he has um, changed his mindset or perspective about war and peace, and how he has shifted the ways that he approaches peace. Um, not only was it interesting from, you know, a peace building perspective, but as someone who, you know, knows what Romeo Dallaire has has gone through with regard to PTSD, um, suicidal thoughts and attempts, um, I think that this was an excellent continuation of Dallaire's personal story. Um, so if you are interested in Romeo Dallaire's story, um, I would actually recommend reading his memoir, which is Shake Hands with the Devil. I would read that first. Um, some of that, it's a huge book, and some of it is difficult to get through, um, both because of its content and it can be dry in some spots, but it will help you understand, you know, the events and Dallaire himself. Um, and then if you don't want all of the details of the genocide um, to the same extent, uh, then maybe starting with his book about PTSD, um, and it's called Waiting for First Delight. Um, and I would say that that book would give it a good overall understanding as well. Um, so reading the piece brings the TBR stack to 1515. Next up is a book that has a very unique structure. Um, and it is The Story of Us by Catherine Hernandez. I'm not sure that the way this story is told is for everyone. But it's definitely a unique take, and it covers some important issues as well. Uh, Mary Grace is the main character, and she is from the Philippines. And Canada has uh, many people, uh, mostly, if not all females, come from the Philippines as caregivers, or what we call in some places in Canada, personal support workers. And they often leave their own families. Uh, they leave them behind in the Philippines to come and care for our families, our elderly, um, and they sacrifice a great deal. And this is true for Mary Grace. Uh, she first goes to Hong Kong and then she comes to Canada. And Catherine Hernandez shines a light on the way that she is treated or mistreated um, by some of her employ employers. Um, and I found the strongest part of the novel to be how she tells the story of Mary Grace as a caregiver and also the relationship that she um, creates, um, especially with Liz, who has Alzheimer's. So the other thing about the story is the perspective 
in which is told. Uh, Mary Grace is pregnant and the story is told from the unborn child to a newly born child and I thought that this was very clever. Um, there were some times that I didn't think it worked as well. Uh, the concept was very uh, interesting but it did take some time to get used to and there were times where I was like the unborn baby would not be able to know that or or to say certain things um, so that was a bit tricky however I think that this is a brave book in many ways um, and it does show you know Catherine Hernandez's talent she's very very talented so if you enjoy books about sacrifice and want to give a different uh, structure a try, then I would suggest this. And it brings the TBR to 1514. Next up is a book by an author that I have been meaning to read um, for some time. I have several of her books on my shelf that have all been unread. And this book is also a movie and I wanted to watch the movie but I wanted to read the book first. So I read Happiness for Beginners by Catherine, Hern or Catherine Hernandez, Catherine Center. Um, this should be a book that I love. It's an adventure story about a woman named Helen who goes on a survival course hiking in the woods um, in order to kind of move on from her recent divorce and also do some self-discovery. So when she gets to this course, one of her brother's best friends has also signed up for the course and she's not, she's not too pleased about this. She's kind of annoyed about it, at least at first. Um, and this is kind of the tension that's in the book. I found the story and the characters to fall a little flat. The story was fine, just okay. The romance was okay. It's not over the top or anything like that, which I appreciate. Um, it's quite subtle. And to me, like I knew where it was going from the beginning. Um, the cast of characters had a lot of potential to make this more of an enjoyable read, I think, but it just didn't take off for me the way I had hoped. Um, I did watch the movie afterwards, uh, which follows the story quite closely and um, I found the characters a little bit more believable and human and I liked them a bit more in the movie. Um, so yeah, that version was better in that way. But overall, this was just an okay read. I think I gave it three stars. Um, it was just not earth shattering for me, which is fine. Um, so the TBR now sits at 1513. The next book is the second book that I've read by this author and I was a little nervous picking it up because the first book that I read by him didn't quite live up to the hype for me. It was good and I liked it. Um, however, this one is a gem and I think I will read more from Stephen Rowley because, uh, because of it and I read The Gunkle. So this, you know, it could have just been a cutesy story but it actually had some depth to it. And I loved the character development, um, especially of the main character, Patrick. So um, Patrick is the gay uncle, uncle of his niece and nephew, Maisie and Grant. These are his brother's kids. And when their mother dies and Patrick's brother is kind of dealing with some mental health issues, um, Patrick gets the kids and kids don't fit into his lifestyle at all. Uh, and the two things that I loved most about this book were the ways that it handled grief. Many of you know that that's a thing for me. Um, I'm always interested in how that topic is handled by an author. And in this case, it's it's definitely there. You know, each character is dealing with things their own way, um, but it's not in your face. Um, and then the second thing that I loved was that it was quite funny not just and not just Patrick's character but like also the kids there were some great lines um I thought the kids were really good and I thought they were well written um and I know there's a sequel out now called Gunkle Abroad so I think that I will most likely be picking it up just to see you know where these characters are going next and uh, what they're up to so that makes the TBR 1512 the last book on my pile here is a children's book and it's a board book that was sent to me from Harbor Publishing. 
It's called A Flock of Gulls, A Chorus of Frogs, and this is by Lucky Bud and Indigenous illustrator Roy Henry Vickers. Um, I absolutely loved the illustrations and the use of vibrant colors. It would definitely capture the attention of, you know, a little one while reading. And the story itself is also simple but fun. Um, it takes groups of animals and shares what their grouping is called. So for example, um, a jumble of jellies is called a bloom. Shoals of dolphins zip and zoom. Um, and it it has you know rhythm and it rhymes throughout the whole thing um and then it ends with a group of people and what they're called and um i just thought that it was a very sweet uh way for children and adults to connect to the story and connect to nature and creation and see ourselves as as part of that so if you are looking for something for a young one in your life then um, and especially if you want um, some indigenous connection and art, I'll show you some other pictures here, um, then I think that this would be a good one to check out. And that brings the TBR to a total of 1,511 for now. So still high, but not so high that it will be impossible to get it below 1,500 again. Um, my next couple of videos will be my June and July book hauls, which of course, will make this number on the TBR stack even higher. Uh, but then my June and July wrap ups, which hopefully will get me a cl little closer to um, that 1500 mark or lower. Fingers crossed that could happen. So please let me know if you have read any of these or if you are interested in any of these books. What was your favorite book that you read in May? If you can remember back that far. Um, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure.